how do I know where I've been called to serve the purposes of God it's called the jurisdiction of your witness you don't just guess where you want to serve the purposes of God there are divine allocations and I want to show you now number one the first way you understand the geography and the jurisdiction of your witness is through your abilities write it down please your abilities are a secret code given by God to help you know your place of witness your abilities talk of your potentials they talk of your giftings please look up when you see me hold a syringe and a stethoscope what would be your guess about who you think I am so those tools can suggest you can't call me a carpenter with a stethoscope and if you see me with nails wood and a hammer what does that suggest so your giftings and your abilities are pointers to the geography of your witness the jurisdiction and the geography of your witness are determined by number one your abilities and that includes your potential and your giftings number two your passion and your pain together your passion and your pain are power keys that help to show you your place of witness wow so your passion is not a waste and your pain is not a waste can i tell you this the most dominant pain in your life is a direction to where you will be a savior also in fact part of the requirement to be a savior is that systems will be created around your life to pass through and connect to the people and with the situations you'll be delivering people from it, you ask those who work for instance in the healing anointing they will tell you there are people who at one point or the other have had to suffer infirmity so when they stand before people there is a memory bank from whence the anointing can come strong from we do not become witnesses in innocence no there is a requisite level of passion and pain pain is a gift if you truly understand it hmm. so someone who was raised alone without a father without a mother had to push through understands the pain of growing without mentors had to survive all kinds of temptations when that person sets up an NGO to raise other people and to mentor young people you see the passion you will see at work there did not just come because of a search for money or fame it came because of there is a history that supports and sponsors that passion show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus listen do you know many times when you survive your seasons of pain you don't come out with results alone you come out with an anointing to deliver people who pass through the same thing every time you are coming out of seasons in your life don't just jump out 10 years of poverty and hardship and you just came out you didn't just come out there is an anointing if you look well and from that anointing you can begin to release people you are a failure if people come after you and pass through the same thing you pass through where then is the deliverance you have gone through it for them listen to me your passion and your pain are power keys I have been sick myself I know what it means to be afflicted I've been afflicted by demon spirits that's why when I cast out demons and when I minister to the sick there is a passion mixed with pain that becomes the host for the anointing to flow to that person when I stand and I see people oppressed I know what oppression can do and so I come with that fire 
could it be that through your pain and your passion God has been speaking to you that there are many people who must arise they must drink from that well of your pain and that well of your passion do not waste your passion I am amazed as a man of God you know I pray for people all the time people want to start all kinds of things and sometimes I cannot believe the passion that people have in certain areas that I completely don't have any passion for whatsoever one day someone came and met me and he said he wants to do goat business you know to take goats from the north and take it somewhere and i noticed this guy was not just looking for streams of income it was like he shared dreams he even wrote things and in my mind i said wow this is interesting is it that you just want a stream of income while you wait for a job he said no he truly believes with all his heart that is the will of god i prayed for him with all my heart why because i don't have that kind of passion so i had to respect his passion it has to come from heaven for him to have that kind of passion it's true i have seen people with all kinds of passion you come and say my passion is to raise young girls to raise young boys i love people but i'm not sure that i have that unique expression of passion take note of your passion Take note of your pain they are pointers to the geography of your witness and then number three divine ordination i'm showing you the three keys that control the allocation of your geography and your jurisdiction as far as being a witness is concerned number one your ability you can know where god has allocated you through your abilities your giftings number two your passion your pain number three divine ordination as we find in jeremiah chapter one you read from verse five down to twelve the young boy jeremiah had an encounter with god and god began to speak to him before i formed thee in the belly he says i knew thee and before thou camest forth from of the womb i sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations next verse the little boy said ah lord god but behold i cannot speak I have a deficiency in speech so in this case now he may not have that ability and then he had a disadvantage of age but he says say not i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak jeremiah so there are times that god can call people I'm saying this because not everyone in ministry and not everyone divinely ordained has that gifting. There are times God calls the least qualified people in terms of oratory, in terms of intelligence, in terms of exposure. Divine ordination can define your allocation as far as your witness is concerned. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Now write this down. This will be our final session and then we pray.